Hello, welcome to the Lily Loves Crochet Podcast episode 32. My name is Emma and this is my podcast all about crochet and crafts and books and anything else I fancy talking about. Um, I hope you are well. Um, everyone's gone back to school here, um, which is strange after having them home for so long. Um, but we're doing okay, we're just taking everything day by day and just trying to live life really <laughs> so I hope you're all well anyway um I've got a few things to talk to you today talk to you about today <laughs> um a finished project I think I showed in my last video and um a few works in progress not many to be honest with you although I have been working on something else so yeah a few things to show you and a couple of books that I've been reading um, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who um, left comments on the last podcast. Um, it was the first time I'd done a sponsored video um, and you were all really, really kind about it. So, and um, they're obviously pleased because they asked to work with me again. So <laughs> that's really lovely for me. Um, and, you know, it means I can um, keep doing more classes and showing you what I've been up to. So. So thank you for being understanding and supporting me. Um, that really, really means a lot to me. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to just get on and show you what I've been working on. Oh, I will say that I did actually, um, I read your comments on the last podcast about the knitted bag. And I agreed um, where the yarn had gone thin, it just didn't look right so I pulled that back um, and I'm going to try try that with some different yarn so I, I haven't finished that I didn't move on with it I just knew that I wouldn't be happy with it so um, you know you've got to follow your heart haven't you um, so there's no progress on that um, but and I've also I've also made notes today so I don't film anything because I I don't know about you but my head is all over the place at the moment um, yeah I just, I'm forgetting everything. Um, oh, the first thing I'll show you actually is I had a really lovely interview. This was in um, this month's uh, it's Simply Crochet. I think it just says 100. I don't know if that's the issue number. Yeah, issue 100. Um, so this is the cover. I love this as well. That looks so, and that does look fairly easy to make. I really want to get on and make some more garments, but um, I don't have time at the moment. I'm still, if you can believe this, working on the book. Um, but the final edits have, uh, have just been sent off, um, so hopefully that will go to the printers now. I know they're quite keen to get moving on it now, so hopefully not long to wait on that. Um, I'm actually just going to stop the camera and just check that I'm <laughs> the mic's working. <laughs> Just a minute. Okay, everything seems to be working, so um, fingers crossed. <laughs> right, um, oh, I really need coffee this morning. So this is issue 100, and I had, um, a, it's a really lovely write-up by a lady called Hannah, who is actually a crochet designer herself. I'll put her link below. Um, she does some lovely work as well. Um, so, um, yeah, it was really, really lovely, actually. Um, and there we go. Um, so, oh, that's just so beautiful. I'm just so... Always oh, so grateful that um, you know I get to have my work featured, and I haven't written a pattern for a magazine for um, a long time. And there's no pattern with this. It's really it was to go alongside the book, really. But um, obviously the book's been held up, so it's just talking about my style and top tips for finding your own style and um, what inspires me, you know. But a really really lovely interview. So um, yeah, I was really really proud of that. Um, so, oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about today's um, episode is that I have a giveaway. Um, someone pointed out, and I hadn't noticed, um, that I'd got to 5,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, I'm, to be honest with you, always surprised anyone <laughs> stops by to watch. But um, we have got 5,000 subscribers, so I felt like that was a really good time to do a giveaway. And because everyone had loved my um, glittery hook, that um, 
Boltec, Alan from Boltec had made me. I went back to him and um, I asked to put in an order to buy, to buy another one for a giveaway. And he very kindly offered to send me one to give away to you, which I just think is so sweet of him. Um, so I've got it ready. Um, maybe we'll do that at the end. Okay, so stay tuned if you want to know how to win one of Alan's handmade and it's the glittery resin ones. Um, I picked one out for you, so I'll, uh, we'll do that at the end. Anyway, I see I'm already all over the place. So um, what have we got? I've been working on, this is, all, this, this is all my work in progress. They're in this bag, so you can see it's not a lot. I am working on, oh, this is just some back and forth it's not my favourite type of crochet, but I've been back and forthing a straight line there of, um, that's just single crochet or UK double crochet. That is for a project for the Crochet Zine magazine. So that will be, um, I won't, I won't give it away actually. That will be in the next issue, I think. So there's that. And then also they're all in the same bag because I'm using the same yarn. So it's quite, it's quite nice for me. Also, I did start a, it was a make-along hosted by Love Crafts or Love, Love Crochet. Um, and it was with the Queen Stitch. Um, if you've not seen her work, it's just beautiful. She designs the most beautiful crochet tops um, and just really sort of modern and designs, quite intricate as well. And um, she was doing a top and I've written down what it was called. Just a minute. It is called the Datura Bloom and it's a free pattern on Love Crochet or Love Crafts um, by the Queen Stitch and they did, uh, like I said, they did a make along so she did lots of videos to accompany it so um, which I think was really useful. I watched one just to have a look, um, they're all up on their Instagram so I'll put all the details in the show notes which will be on my blog. I'll link it below. Um, but it's beautiful. It's um, I'll try and put some photos up for you to have a quick look. But it's basically a crochet top and it's made of two sort of panels. And you, first of all, you crochet these square panels and you join them as you go. They're, they're being washed out, aren't they, because of the light? There we go. They're beautiful. Um, they're quite dense they're quite um thick panels because she uses quite a small hook i think it's a, a three and a half i think it's this one actually yeah it's a three and a half millimeter and it's just dk weight cotton so that's going to make quite um it's not going to be as drapey as if you used um you know a bigger hook but um those are the squares so you do a panel here and then I've just started on the second panel. So there'll be a panel down here and then you sort of crochet in between each panel and you do the same for the back. And then she adds lovely, a lovely sort of edge and a ruffle and oh, it just, it looks really nice. Anyway, I started, but uh, I knew that I probably wouldn't be able to follow the make along. So I've just been going at my own pace. So I've not even finished the first, you've, I've got to do one, two, three. I've got to do four of these panels that was I think the first week and as you can see I've done one and a half <laughs> so um and you're joining those as you go as well but she like I said she does videos but they really um they're really pretty actually and um here we go another look don't they look lovely I think they're so beautiful and you know each part is a different sort of stitch so it's not just all squares which I really liked so I'm working on that um and then that little project for the crochet zine and that is it really that that is it for now just because i've got so many other things i'm doing so i'm re trying really hard I, I really need to go back and revisit some patterns i've still got patterns from last year that need writing up like the, for example the beret the cushion um but really i've just i really want to get the book finished i just now that things are moving again, I just need to get that done before I can focus on anything, really. But I did finish my, um, oh, my bag. Now, if you know me, you'll know that I haven't bothered to sew in the ends, but it's done. Here we go. This was my 
daisy market bag it's quite a big one actually i was using it as a beach bag and i have believe it or not already used it um we managed to get a beach day in um before the end of summer and um it's brilliant it's just the perfect towels costumes nothing too precious um it's you know it's worked really well and um yeah really pleased with the way that came out uh i must take some photos of it what i've done i did um i did write up the pattern for the square everything's getting washed out today there we go i wrote the pattern up for the square um and i filmed the uh the tutorial for it as well so i wrote that i filmed it and i also filmed how i joined them so the join as you go method is is up there as well um that's on on the youtube i mean i'm assuming most of you are crocheters so you probably don't need to to uh, you can probably just work it out from the pattern but the uh video tutorials are fun and um it keeps my mind engaged so i've been enjoying doing those um, but yes, yeah, so that's finished and I just really, really love it. I must take some photos of it and get a blog post. So all I've done is I've done a three by three square in daisies, joined as you go. Um, yeah, I did two three by three squares. Yes, I did. And then I just joined them all the way around with yeah single crochet there's the inside just a row of single crochet and then i did a couple of rows of single crochet all around the top it looks to me like three or four rows there and then i just crocheted on a very simple strap this is not very long because they tend to stretch a bit when you crochet them this way this is um unless you put i generally put like a slip stitch all along each side and that will stop the stretch so i didn't make it too long um because i know that that will stretch out a bit but to be honest with you it doesn't really matter for the type of bag type of bag it is and it won't have anything too heavy in it so um but yeah so that's that done i'm really really pleased with that i absolutely love it um Typically, summer is over, <laughs> so I won't have any time to use it. But um, maybe I could use it for work. Put all my books in there. So um, that was that, really. I'll pop that down there. Um, I think that's it. Let me have a look at my list. Oh. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, if you want, If you want me to write up how I wrote the bag... Uh, how I made the bag I will I'm happy to um it just was so simple I think once the squares are joined it's just a case of joining them along three sides but if anyone wants me to I'm, I will do that um what else have we got here I've done that look at me I'm ahead of myself um so that's it that's all the crochet not very much at all um but I'm hoping that now um the children are back at school I'll get a bit more time to spend on some projects I I really really want to get those projects finished and written up because I know some people have been waiting for them for quite a while and I feel I feel really bad about that but you know the way life is at the moment you just just getting through it really <laughs> that sounds so bad um okay so um, now I'm going to show you what I've been doing for Skillshare this month and it's really exciting. So as I said earlier, um, I'm working with Skillshare again, so they have sponsored this portion of the video. Um, and I don't know if, if you watched last episode, you would have heard me talk, talking about them, but um, they are an online membership community where you can take classes on um, so many different things, um, creative classes on photography, uh, graphic design, um, videography, embroidery, knitting, um, that they're, they're just so many. So, and um, I think you can join as a member and you get access to this community where you can, you know, talk about your projects or your classes. And um, I think it's a, just under $10 a month. Um, so this month I decided to have a look at resin craft. Now I'd wanted to do resin craft for a long time. It's been number one on my want, want, 
on T's list. Um, so back in um, August when I had my birthday, I had an Amazon voucher and I bought myself um, some silicone moulds. Um, so this really gave me the opportunity to try to try a class because I, I never really knew where to start. I mean, I, I'm sure I could have found out, but it was just really, really helpful. So um, I, I just searched on Skillshare for resin jewellery and um, a couple of classes came up. So um, the one I used was, um, it was Alcohol Ink and Resin Pour Jewellery by Kelly Chase. I will put all the details um, on the blog post of all the classes I watched um, because afterwards I did watch a few more and get a few more tips on, on the resin jewellery. So, um, and her class was really good. It, it was under 30 minutes for one. Um, and most of the classes on Skillshare are under 60 minutes. So, um, and they're all broken into really small chunks. So you don't have to sit there for half an hour. You could just work your way through it. Um, but the... She did show moulds and that, but her um, resin jewellery was um, just pour jewellery. So you just poured it over like a bin liner or maybe a silicone cake tray. Um, so you didn't need the moulds that I've got. So um, I just, just want to say that up front because, you know, I know that investing in these sorts of crafts can be quite expensive if you try and buy everything at once. Like I said, I already had the moulds, so it wasn't too bad for me. I did buy a resin kit. Um, from Amazon and again I'll link this is the one I used um, I will link everything in the blog post so in that you get um, a casting and a coating and you sort of have to mix them together in equal amounts to make the solution um, and just make sure that you've covered your workspace really because um, quite messy to clean up once it's got dry so I'm just going to show you some of the bits that I got and what I actually made um, and I've brought them all up look at this basket I found this at the car boot sale it was a pound <laughs> I'm thinking of taking all the the lining off but I just haven't got around to it all right let's take these bits out so um, the trays that I bought look like this so oh they've got all dusty so I've got two trays like this from Amazon and you can see they've got these little um, bits here so that you leave a space for your jewellery, um, your necklaces or whatever. Um, so I had two of those and actually the kit was really good. It came with loads of um, loads of bits to help you. It came with spatulas and the pipettes um, and some jewellery uh, clasp things. And it came with such a good variety of moulds. So long and thin moulds like this. What else have we got? Um, ring moulds for making um, rings. Um, just, just some little diamondy moulds there. And a bracelet mould. I actually used that to make a little bracelet for Lulu. And then um, the other moulds I bought were these moons. So it's like uh, the stages of the moon, which I loved. And I thought maybe once I've done them, I could make some sort of window hanging or something. There's a, just a big one that came in a set of two. So I will link the moulds that I bought. And um, so I used the video. Um, I made sure to follow all her instructions on mixing, preparation, what I needed. So I, I watched the video really before I started, just so that I knew where I'd be going. And I'm really pleased with the pieces I did, actually. I've since watched a couple more videos um, on Skillshare. There's one on flower resin, which um, was really useful. It had lots of tips on how to get like bubbles out and things like that. So, um, but I'll show you the pieces. So this was the little bangle that I made for Lulu and the glitter and things I already had so I love that and then um, just some little like jewellery pieces now I think um, what you have to do is you layer up your resin so you put a really thin layer when you're doing flower uh, resin you put a really thin layer on then you lay your items on top then you leave that for sort of 10 hours and then you put another coat on and I was going to put three coats on but I didn't have quite enough resin so um, mine are slightly it's got a slight dip but 
they still look really pretty so there's a little necklace and these flower pieces I also bought from Amazon they were for nail nail art believe it or not and they came in a tiny little pot like this um there you go and I got two two pots like this in the set that I bought um but you can also press your own flowers or I also managed to buy a whole load of packs like this they came from quite far away so um they took a while to get here um, but I have started pressing my own flowers, but they weren't ready. Um, and what else have we got? I've got some really tiny little necklace. So that one was just glitter. So pretty. And then this one, I love this one. I might make this one into a little progress keeper. It's just got a tiny little flower in it. Isn't that lovely? And then... Uh, this one is Lulu's. She's got a flower and glitter in hers. And this one is mine, so I'm hoping to wear this on a necklace. They need a bit of a polish. We've all been mauling them. Isn't that lovely? I'm just so pleased with how they came out, and I definitely can't wait to try more. Um, and then the these are the, what the coasters came out like um i obviously need to work a little bit oh also I, <laughs> I did actually make the mistake of after about 12 hours i put my finger on the resin to see how hard it was and i've got a bit of a fingerprint on this one but you know it's not bad for a first go so that's the coaster that was in the moon set so i'm definitely going to make more of those um i'm really really pleased as the back Really, really so pleased with how these came out. And then the other moon sections. I only did two because, like I said, I only bought a small set of the resin. I wasn't sure how much I'd have. There we go. Let me show you one at a time. So there's the half moon. And there. Oh, it's so pretty. I loved it. I loved making it. Um, I definitely want to do more. So I'm really, really pleased that I got the opportunity to have a go, finally have a go at that. Um, I'll definitely be ordering more resin, um, probably a bigger quantity so that I can um, practice more. And, um, you know, I did pick up a few tips from some of the other videos as well. Um, one of them was that if you, um, because the first video um, was just on um, resin and with alcohol pigments. Um, and then one of the other videos I had had used flowers. And um, yeah, the flowers will move. So for example, you can see this one is pushing up to the edge. They, you sort of place the flowers and they sort of, they do try to move out. So you sort of have to go back to them every hour um, with a sort of needle and just reposition them where you want them because um they they do tend to move and i wasn't expecting that and i did it the i sort of did it to start with i got them all and then i walked away from them so the the positioning of the flowers is not quite how i i did them but they still look lovely so um and i just think that will be i might have to drill some holes in those and get those hung up in the the window so yes I, I really recommend that course. I will put the links to the course that I did in the description below, along with some other resin jewellery um, courses on Skillshare. So for a limited time, you can use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So that's all of their content, all of their classes. Um, you know, and if you're interested and maybe, you know, I piqued your interest, click the link have a look have a read through um and and see it might be one way of trying before you commit so um i really do recommend the classes that i've tried um so far and i'm definitely excited to try more every time i'm on there i'm so inspired so um yeah uh, but you know no pressure from me obviously so um i think that's it about um skillshare and my resin journey i'm so i'm so happy i'm 
really really happy with the pieces that I've made and I'm definitely going to put be putting them on chains and, and wearing them but um and experimenting a bit more I think so um that's that um and I think that's it let me see what else I've got on my notes so sorry yep that's it so um i just talked to you about the books i've been reading i have just finished oh okay this one this is called the glass house by eve chase i grabbed this one from the library and i flew through it um it's a really lovely story well it's it's sort of um a bit of a thriller but it's it's just a nice easy read really but um it's sort of one of those books that flicks between times so we're going from the 70s to to now and um it's about a a young lady who becomes a nanny for a family in london um and the mother is heavily pregnant and she's got a daughter and a young son and um sadly she she loses the baby and her grief is such that she her husband sort of packs her away to this old manor house in the country to sort of get over it. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite sad to start with. And, you know, the nanny, um, you know, she's got sort of a backstory as well. Anyway, they, they end up in this manor house in the woods, um, sort of neglected over the summer with the young children. And they find a baby in the woods, a newborn baby. Um, and obviously the mum wants to keep the baby and um, she's still very much grieving for her own child. Um, so there's lots of sort of moral um, implications that go along with that. Um, and then all the time, this is sort of going back and forwards with a uh, story of a modern day family um, and how their stories are intertwined. So it's very quick, lovely read. Um, nothing too strenuous and I got through that quite fast um but I did enjoy that so that's that I can send that back now to the library and then the other one I've just started reading is um I didn't bring it up with me actually it's a book by Emma Donoghue I'll tell you about that one in the next podcast it's um I'm not sure how I feel about it yet so um, I'll let you know and I'm also reading The Scarlet Letter by Nathan Yao, Nathan Yao, Nathaniel, how do you say that? Nathaniel, Hawthorne, anyway. Um, I've never read this one, it's classic, isn't it? I grab this from the library as well, they get me every time. They just need to put books on display and I'm, I'm there. <laughs> um, I do remember watching the film with, I think it was Demi Moore back in the day. Um, I must rewatch that actually. So, um, but I've never read it, so I feel like I just wanted to really. Um, it's quite hard, I suppose, to understand that level of punishment. Um, she's, if you've not heard of the Scarlet Letter, she's punished. It's Puritan times and she is punished for being an adulteress. She has a baby. Her husband um, has been gone for a long time. She has a baby uh, that they obviously know is not her husband's. And she, uh, her punishment is she has to walk around with her cloak embroidered, with an embroidered A on her bodice. So, um, but like I said, I've never read it, but I, I do remember the film. So I'm, I'm trying with that, enjoying that so far. Um, I think that's it. I've not really watched anything. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did watch, um, what's it called? I'm thinking of ending things. I don't even know if I should talk about that because it was one of those films that I had to Google. <laughs> it was on Netflix and it's by, um, based on a book by Ian Reid, which I had never read. Um, and it was directed by Charlie Kaufman and he did uh, Being John Malkovich and The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. But it had some really, really good actors in it. It had David Thewlis, it had um, Tony Collette and the main character was Jesse Buckles, is that? I recognised her from something. I feel like she must be quite famous, but I didn't know her name. I had to look look up her name. Anyway, um, it's one of those films that plays with time, physics, um, and the meaning of life, mortality, um, ageing, death, uh, dementia. It 
I mean, like I said, I got through it and I, I mean, the performances were brilliant, but I got through it and I was left thinking like, it was a two hour film. <laughs> Luckily, I had some crochet to do. Um, and I did get to the end and think, what happened? I don't know what happened there. So I'm not sure if I would recommend that really if you're just after a bit of entertaining. I generally prefer my films with a little less Googling. <laughs> So, um, but I did watch it. I was keen to watch it, but I'm very excited because I saw Netflix have got an adaption of Rebecca coming out in October and they just released the trailer for it. If I can find it, I'll link it on the blog post because that looks amazing. Um, and that's got some good actors in it as well. So I'm really looking forward to that, watching that. And then um, they've got a new series coming out called Enola, which is about Sherlock Holmes's sister. And that's got the girl from, the young girl from Stranger Things in. So I'm really looking forward to watching that as well when it comes out. So some good autumn TV coming up, I think. Um, and I think that is everything. I'm just gonna check my notes. Yes, it is. So. I'm just going to quickly show you the hook that I'm giving away in this episode. Um, I haven't actually unpacked this yet, so I've kept it safe. Alan has sent it to me to send out to one of you. Lucky winners. So I think all you have to do is leave a comment. Um, tell me, what is your favorite crochet hook to work with? I will enter you in to a draw and I will select a winner randomly for this beautiful crochet hook. Hand turned by Alan over at Boltec. Look at that, it's lovely. Now I think, I can't quite remember and I'm not sure if it says it. I feel like this is a five millimeter. I will put the details. Yeah, I can't, I can't see it. I will put the details on the uh, blog post. You might have written it on here actually, let's have a look. No. Yeah, I can't remember what I ordered. I think it will either have been a five or a four millimetre. I feel like they're the most um, commonly used sizes. So there we go. If you would like to win this crochet hook, it's got the gold glitter, when it's walnut. Just leave a comment telling me what is your favourite size crochet hook? And I will enter you in to the draw. Sorry, I had to stop the camera then. The, um, the camera was flashing. So here we go. We were admiring this beautiful hook. This could be yours. Leave a comment in the comments and I will pull a winner from the comments, let's say in two weeks. So I'll put all the details below. It's, oh, his work is just so so beautiful, all handmade in England um, from his studio. Really lovely, really lovely. And I really, really rate his hooks as well. So um, I just, I'm really, really grateful that he, you know, offered to, um, to do that as well. So I think that's everything. I'm sorry if this podcast seems a bit disjointed. Um, I am out of the habit of filming, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or being in front of the camera anyway. Um, but I will be back soon. Like I said, things are looking at getting a bit bit easier for me once the book is um, finally finished, which I, I feel like it, it is. So fingers crossed. I can give you some good news on that next time. Um, and I will start being able to focus on some more, some more of my own projects. So I hope you are all well. Thank you for watching and subscribing and um, supporting me in general, really. Um, I'm always so grateful um, and I never take it for granted. So thank you. Um, and I will see you all again, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I think that sounds about right. <laughs> so take care. Um, let me know if I've forgotten anything. Leave a comment if you would like to, to enter the giveaway um, and um, I will announce the winner in the next podcast. Okay, bye-bye.